Simon says subscribe and click on the bell icon to receive notifications. Welcome to this introduction to Power BI class. My name is Dave Casuto and I will be your instructor. Well, what are we going to cover in this class? Well, we start from the beginning where we're going to bring in some outside data into the program. But the first program we start with is Power Query so we can transform the data, clean it up, and make it ready for Power BI to essentially do some analysis and what we call data modeling with other different data sources. And once we start to see those relationships manifest, we'll be able to do some beautiful visualizations with charts and graphs and also filters and slicers. And once that's all done, we're going to go ahead and export it to the web so you can share it with your friends, family, and colleagues. All right, look forward to seeing you in the first lesson and thanks everyone. When you first open up Power BI, you'll be met with this welcome screen. Very simply, you're going to see some options for watching some video tutorials, and also, most importantly, you'll see an option for getting data. Now, in order for us to analyze our data, we need to actually get some data to be able to bring it into Power BI, and also a program called Power Query. So let's go ahead and just do that first. I click on that, and you're going to see it's going to take us to this Get Data dialog box. Now, Power BI allows you to work with a number of different data types, with Excel, text and CSV, PDFs, and also a number of third-party database tools. Now, you're going to see also on the left-hand side, you can filter these out by the different categories. Now, what we're going to do initially is just bring in an Excel document. So I'm going to click on Connect, and then let's go ahead and go into our data folder. And now you're going to see I have these two Excel documents for me to work with. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and just double click on this Customer Master Excel document. And you're going to see it's connecting to the data. And I get taken to this dialog box called the Navigator. Now, I don't see anything here until I click on this little checkbox. And now I'm going to get a nice little preview of all my data inside of this Excel document. Now, I'm going to bring all of this stuff in. But there's a chance that I may want to transform my data. It's quite possible that the data you're bringing in is not clean data. It needs to be fixed. Maybe you need to filter some things out. It's quite possible that the original database that you're working with did not bring in the data in the way that you'd like it to. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to click on Transform Data. And you're going to see it's now going to take us to another program altogether. We are now in the Power Query Editor. So this is sort of a partner of Power BI that it's going to allow us to transform our data and then ultimately bring it back into Power BI after it's been transformed. So let's go ahead and now just take a nice little tour of what we see here. Now, if we look on the top here, I have all of my different column headings. And then to the left of this, you're going to see the different data types that these column headings are connected to. So you can see here that customer ID, it says 123. Well, when I click on 123, this is indicating to me that this is, in fact, a whole number. Look at this. This is ABC. This is telling me that, in fact, this is just a text data type. Now, I can very easily change it just by simply clicking on this little graphic, and then it opens right up here. I'm going to go ahead and keep these as they are for right now. And you'll see that on the right of each column heading is this little drop down. And this gives us the ability to sort either ascending or descending. And also it gives us the opportunity for filtering in case there's certain things you don't want to see. Now, whatever you do here, this is going to allow you to then bring it back into Power BI. So for example, if I only wanted to filter out by certain states, I can filter it out to so say, hey, listen, I only want to bring in Alaska and Alabama. I click OK. And then it's filtered. And then when I finally close this out and I bring it into Power BI, it's only going to be showing these states, hence the transformation. I'm going to go ahead and bring that right back. I'm going to clear out the filter, and everybody comes right back. Now, one thing I want you to notice is this applied steps. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do that one more time with my category. And I'm just going to say, hey, listen, I only want computer store and corporate. Now, as I do that, I want you to notice that under the Applied Steps section, a new step now appears. And now, for example, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to just make a space between customer and ID. Now, how do I do that? Just by simply double-clicking inside here, and then I'm going to put a little space, and then hit Enter. Now, you'll notice I now have a new Applied Step. If you ever want to go back to any of these, therefore eliminating any of these steps, I can very easily do that. So now I click on Change Type, and you're going to see it went back to where it was before. I click back on Filtered Row. That comes back up. And now I click back on Rename Columns, and you can see there I am. So you can always go back in time. 
Now I do not want to have a filtered row. So what I'm going to do is come over to here and then just simply click on this X and then I'm going to delete this entirely. So now you can see I've removed that filter step, but I've kept my rename columns. Beautiful. Exactly what I want. So now let's continue on here by bringing in more data because ultimately I want to have more data to combine with this master customer data to ultimately be able to create what we call relationships. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, how do I do that in the Power Query Editor? Because earlier we did it within Power BI, within the welcome screen. Well, guess what? I can do it right here from the Power Query Editor just by simply going over to New Sources. And then you'll notice, here's my Excel. You can see here SQL, Text CSV. I can even bring in some web data. This time, let's go ahead and bring in a different type of data which is going to be my text. And this pops right up to my last folder I work with. And you can see here is my invoice data.txt. And this dialog box is going to look a little bit different than the last one I saw, because this is just plain old TXT. It is not an Excel file, so there's not different worksheets to choose from. So you can see here, there I go. OK, this is great. And you can see that it's identifying the fact that there is a delimiter of tabs. And that's why it's able to bring it in like this. So now I love this. I'm going to click OK. And now you'll see I have two queries available. One is my invoice data and one is my master customer. Just like that. And you'll also notice that my applied steps resets for each of these queries. Now, if you see here, I have a customer ID column here and I have a customer ID column here. Now, this is going to be very important when we start talking about relationships and data modeling. But let's now go back to invoice data and let's explore this data set. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll over here to the right hand side and you're going to notice that I have year, month and day. I have quantity, I have sales and all these things are looking pretty good in terms of how they're all organized because I have my sales as dollars. If it's not when you bring it in, just notice again, you have different data types you can choose. Now, what I'd like to do is have these three combined. I'd like to have my month, my day and my year combined into one and then ultimately formatting it as a date because I'd like for Power BI to examine this as a date and then also bring it in for individual months, days, and years. Now, how do I do that? Well, I'd like to actually combine these columns. So what I'll have to do is select each column heading in the order that I'd like them to be merged by. So I'd like to have month be first, then I'm gonna hold down the control key on my keyboard, select the day column, and then still while holding down control, click on year. And now, currently, I'm in the Home tab, and I need to go over here to Transform. And then, very simply, I'm going to choose Merge Columns. And this Merge Columns dialog box pops up. Choose how to merge the selected columns. And you can see it's going to ask me, well, is there going to be a separator by merging these? Sometimes, when you want to merge your data together, you might want to have spaces, colons, right? All kinds of different things here. What I'm going to do is do a custom one. And what is that going to be? Well, it's just going to be a forward slash and bring them as date. And then I can give it a name and I can say date of transaction. Beautiful. I click OK. Now you're going to see that has now been merged into one. And then you can see here it is now ABC. And I'm going to convert that to a date. And you're going to see beautiful. That's all set. And you can see how my icon changes just like that. Now, it's definitely worth exploring some of the options you have here within the ribbon. Now, I'm going to stay within my Transform tab and just notice a few options you have, especially at a beginner level. We'll keep it nice and light for you. You can see here is use first row as headers. Many times when you bring in data from a third party website or a source, it may not bring it in very neatly. You can say, hey, listen, this first row should be my header, not the one that we're talking about. OK, you can see here's also another way to change your data type. You can see here is split column, which is going to be the opposite of what we just did when we merged the columns. And you can see here's also a nice way to change the format of our text. And if we go back to home, you will see some overlap in terms of some of the things we already saw. Split columns, the data types, as well as the ability to remove columns. And once again, the ability to bring in new sources. Now, right clicking does go a long way within Power BI. So I always recommend that. So if you right click here, you're going to see here is the option to remove, remove other columns. You can duplicate columns. Again, you can change the type. You can rename a column heading from here. Lots and lots you can do just from right clicking. Now, I'm pretty happy with this. My data is looking pretty good. And now what I'd like to do is get out of here and go back to Power BI. So how do I do that? Well, you're going to see here is this close and apply. And that's what I'm going to choose from my drop down. 
Now you're going to see it's going to leave the Power Query Editor and take us back to Power BI. It's loading up both of these data sources. And once it finishes loading, not a whole lot happens until we examine a little bit further in terms of how Power BI's workspace looks. So let's go ahead and just check that out now. So we're back in Power BI. And if you look over here in the left-hand side, you're going to see here's the report view, which we're going to examine a little bit to work with our visuals. But for our purposes right now, let's go over here to table view. Now you'll notice that currently I have the invoice data selected. So it's showing me all the data that I brought in, including my date of transaction that I've now just transformed to bring it into Power BI. I have my master customer and you'll see here's confirmation of the transformation because I have a space between customer and ID and everything's looking pretty good. Now, if I open these up, you're going to see each of these individual column headings that I was working with earlier, now all brought in. Some of these are numbers, some of these are texts, and you can see signified by these little sigma icons. Beautiful. Now, what we'll want to do at this point, since we have two data sets, is to create a relationship. Now, I have some good news, is that Power BI has this really amazing tool for automatically detecting the relationships. But first, let's go ahead and go to our Table Tools tab, click on Manage Relationships, and you're going to see that there's a relationship already created. Now, if I go over here to Edit, we're going to see select tables and columns that are related, invoice data, and customer ID. Notice how that's in gray, master customer, and customer ID. And notice how it's a many to one relationship. There are many invoices for one customer. That's beautiful. So I'm gonna go ahead and click OK and click Close. And let me show you how this happened and why. If I go over here to File, and I come down here to my Options, go to Options again, and then I come down here to Data Load, you're gonna see that there's this option for Auto Detect New Relationships After Data is Loaded. So that's fantastic, I'm gonna click OK. Now, when I have a relationship created, it is gonna allow me to overlap these two data sets so I can borrow from one and then create one giant visualization based off of all the data that I have now related. If you have more than one data set, it becomes even more powerful because once you borrow from one, you can borrow from its friends and so on and so on. And let's just go ahead and take a look at this third tab just so we can see another view of our relationships so you can see exactly what's going on from potentially a more visual perspective. So you can see here, there's another way to identify this in fact is a relationship. Beautiful. Now let's go over here to our report view. Click on that. And now this is where we can build out our visuals. So let's just first take a tour of what we're looking at here. Notice here on the lower left, I have some option for creating individual pages, right? You can do another one here. I can rename this just by simply double clicking on it. And I'll just call this sales 2024. Then if we look over here on the right hand side, I have the ability to build out all kinds of different visuals. To the right of that is my original data, and you can see, beautiful, I have my option for my sales, I have my customer ID, I come over to here, and again, notice I can combine them. So if I wanted to see each individual, let's say, customer name, I can then combine it with my quantity and have these guys relate to each other and then create a data visualization around that. So let's go ahead and just do a really simple one. I'm just gonna click on sales. And you'll notice that automatically a new visualization appears. Well, you know what, that's cool, but it's not exactly complete. So what I can do now is combine it. Well, let's just say category. I choose that and now notice how it changes very quickly and easily. And then I have the option to now change this visualization to a different type. So you know what, I'm not really a big fan of this one. So I'm gonna click on pie chart very easily done right there. And you know what, I can even change this to a line chart very quickly and easily, comparing those two. And then finally, I'm gonna land here on this donut chart, and then I'm gonna make that nice and big. Now let's take a look how we can format this. So I click on this now, you're gonna see how this is gonna take me to all kinds of different component options for this particular donut chart. Now, if I want the legend or not, I can go ahead and turn that on, turn that off. But if I do want it, but I want it, let's just say on the top, I can very easily do that. So let's go ahead and say top center. And now that just transforms there. And then do I want a title for my legend showing or not? I don't really need that, right? Take that away. And if you did want to actually customize it, you can customize it and change the name. Now each of these is called slices. So if I wanted to customize individual slices, and if I wanted to make Curio Shop a completely different color, I can very easily do that. You can see beautiful, nicely done. I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this, minimize this. And then let's jump over here to this column where we might wanna do a filter on our categories. 
So go over to here to filters, category is all. I click on this little drop down, and you know what? I only really want computer store, corporate, and curio. Now I am very easily able to now filter it. Okay, now let's go ahead and do one more visual. I'm gonna go ahead and click away from here, making sure that nothing is selected. And I'm gonna go back to my data one more time. I'm gonna choose sales. Again, this is gonna pop up to the default, but I'm gonna override that. I'm gonna apply what we call a card. So we're gonna find this little icon, this one, two, three, and I'm going to bring this over here in the upper right, and then I'm going to resize this. And then from here, let's just go ahead and take a look at a different set of visualization options we have for formatting it because this is a different visualization. So beautiful, you can see here, call out value. Well, you know what? I'd actually like to make this a little bit more bold. Maybe I wanna change the font entirely. Beautiful, I love that. Maybe you wanna change the color. Let's make that orange, love that. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this. And again, you have the option to turning on or off the category label. Beautiful. Well, I am super happy with this and my boss needs to see all this stuff here. So I'm ready now to do some publishing. So I come over to here to home and you're gonna notice there's this option for publish right here. You'll also notice if I go over here to file and publish, it's gonna give me the option to publish to Power BI. And then finally, if you wanted to export it, you can export it as a PDF if you like. Let's go ahead and go back. But now before I publish, let's go ahead and give it a good name. So I'm gonna click on file, save as, and then I'm just gonna give it a name. We'll just call this category sales 2024. Save it inside my documents folder, click on save. And then finally, I am ready to publish it. I'm gonna save it to what's called my workspace. And where this is gonna go is my Power BI online. So I choose select. And you're gonna see it's now uploading it, saving it over there. And this is gonna give me the opportunity for embedding this into a website and also allowing other people to see it on a more global level. So now I'm gonna go ahead and open that up. And now this is gonna take me to my browser because we are currently now inside of Power BI Online. And you can see beautifully, all of my visuals have now come with me. I have the ability to edit it. I have the ability to share and even export it into a variety of different formats. And you'll see also here in my workspaces, the ability to go right back to home to see all of your Power BI documents. And yes, this data is in fact interactive. So when I click on this now, this becomes highlighted. I click on this, this becomes highlighted. And then guess what? I also have the ability to engage with it in a variety of different ways. Now, especially when I click on edit, now this takes me back to something familiar. So now we've done a complete round trip of bringing in our data into the desktop version, transforming it, creating visualizations based off of our data models and relationships, and then finally exporting it to the Power BI online module, giving us the opportunity to then edit it again and also share it if we choose. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.